theater dressing room is a very special place. It's where the act of theater begins. And makeup is a magic. It's a ritual. It's the means by which you transform yourself into the character you hope to play. You make up your face as you think she might have looked. You dress your hair as you think she might have dressed hers. I'm wearing my hair tonight as Jocasta, or at least as I hope she wore it. And then there comes a moment when she looks at you in the mirror and you realize that she's looking at you and recognizing you as herself. It is through you, her love, her hope, her fear, her terror is to be expressed. And there's a moment of fear on your own part. Dread, sense of hazard, feeling that perhaps you haven't done quite enough work. Perhaps you should have gone back to the studio and worked again. Because that which you do not want to do is to fail in either clarity or in passion. You give all your life to doing this one thing. It sounds grim, it sounds frightening. It isn't. It has a great gaiety at times and a great wonder. But at the same time, there is that need to go back to the studio. Dance is communication. And the great desire is to be, speak clearly and beautifully and with inevitability. And this is true of all of us. It's true of me. It's true of every member of my company. For Yuriko. Jean McDonald. Ellen Siegel. Robert Cohan. David Wood. Lillian Beerstecker. Bertram Ross. Winter. Mary Hinkson.
It is here in the studio that the dancer learns his craft, the mastery of his instrument, which is the human body. The dancer cultivates an awareness of the head and throat. dancer learns flexibility and control. The dancer masters the turn of the body on its axis. Strengthens the legs for the daring of the leap. The dancer is realistic. His craft teaches him to be. Either the foot is pointed or it is not. No amount of dreaming will point it for you. This requires discipline, not drill, not something imposed from without, but discipline imposed by you yourself, upon yourself. Your goal is freedom, but freedom may only be achieved through discipline. In the studio, you learn to conform, to submit yourself to the demands of your craft so that you may finally be free. A dancer is not a phenomenon. 
He's not a phenomenal creature. In other words, I think he's a divine normal. He does what the human body is capable of doing. Now, this takes time. It takes about 10 years of study. Doesn't mean that he won't be dancing before that time, but it does take the pressure of time so that the house of the body can hold its divine tenant, the spirit. There's a great deal of talent. There's no loss of talent. The tragedy lies in the fact that it isn't used very much. I think that's what this amazing old composer once said to me, and I think it's what he meant when he said that everyone's born with genius, but some people only keep it a few minutes. In other words, what happens when you have to work 10 years, you get tired. But those who do press through finally arrive at a moment when they don't have to dance in a group of 40 or 14. They become five. They become one of four. Now, this is not competition. There is no competition. You are in competition with one person only, and that is the individual you know you can become. And that is the thing that makes a dancer's life the life of a realist and gives it some of its hazard and some of its wonder. It is a creative process. It is out of that handling of the material of the self that you are able to hold the stage in the full maturity and power which that magical place demands. You are able to dance youth's lyric joy and sadness at being in love for the first time.
are able to perform with a circus-like daring the fragile matter of a flirtation. You have become capable of the act of theater. Your years of training and discipline in your craft and in the cultivation of yourself as a human being have made it possible for you to be free. What you do seems done for the first time. You are able to hold the stage and dance with clarity the deep matters of the heart.
And when a dancer is at the peak of his power, he has two lovely, fragile, perishable things. One is spontaneity, but it is something arrived at over years and years of training. It's not a mere chance. The other is simplicity, but that also is a different simplicity. It's the state of complete simplicity, costing no less than everything, of which Mr. T.S. Eliot speaks. And how many leaps did Nijinsky take before he made the one that startled the world? He took thousands and thousands and thousands. And it's that legend that gives us all a kind of energy, a strength, and an arrogance to go back into the studio, to work again among the many, that we may be once more reborn as the one. A dancer's world is the heart of man with its joys and its hopes 
and its fears and its loves. And a dancer's world is arrived at by days and days of work, weeks of work, and years of work. But there is one wonderful line of St. John Purse, and it expresses more clearly than anything any of us can say, the privilege of the instant. But he says, you have so little time to be born to the instant.